Well, OHSU right here in Portland managed to make human skin cells act like egg cells, fertilize them, and they started developing into human embryos. It's still very early in the process for this type of research, but there's already been pushback that we'll get to in a moment. But first, let's think back to high school biology class. In normal human reproduction, a sperm cell from a male fertilizes an egg cell from a female. Each of those cells contain 23 chromosomes. When the cells combine, they start to multiply, creating new cells that contain those 23 chromosomes from the male and the 23 from the female. So 46 altogether. Eventually, they develop into human, a human fetus, and those chromosomes determine what genetic traits it has. It's a biological process that for some is not possible due to fertility issues. Some women have eggs that aren't optimal for fertility and many of them deteriorate as they get older. For same-sex couples, they have to figure out how to get the other half of the equation. OHSU says they're on the path to overcoming those obstacles by potentially replacing the need for healthy egg cells. We took a skin cell from a person and extracted its nucleus, and the nucleus is the part of the cell that carries the DNA, which codes for all our traits. And we transferred that nucleus into a donor egg cell, so this was an egg that came from another woman who donated that egg, who's had its nucleus removed. So we essentially replaced the egg nucleus with this skin cell nucleus. That egg cell with a skin cell nucleus was then fertilized with a normal sperm cell. OHSU says they created 82 functional eggs that they then fertilized. About 9% or 7 of them started developing into embryos in a petri dish, but they had abnormalities. Remember how the sperm and egg cells each have 23 chromosomes and when they combine they make 46? Well, the nucleus of a skin cell already had 46 chromosomes, so researchers had to get the skin cell to give up half its chromosomes in order to combine with sperm. They were able to do that, but scientists were not able to control which chromosomes it discarded and which traits it would affect. So most of them would have probably eventually stopped developing. So, and that's actually what happens normally in the body with most miscarriages, actually. Most miscarriages are due to an abnormal number of chromosomes, and the pregnancy will develop to a certain point and then stop developing. So that's what we would have expected would have happened with most of these embryos as well. The researchers ended the experiment after six days, and the developing embryos that had chromosomal abnormalities were discarded. Again, this research is still in very early stages. It's at least a decade away from producing actual viable fetuses that make it to term and develop properly. But tinkering with human development has pro-life advocates alarmed. Here's Oregon Right to Life Executive Director Lois Anderson. My gut reaction was honestly a little bit of horror because it is playing around with creating life, growing that nascent human life, and then experimenting on it, um, on a human life that has no ability to consent, and then either destroying it outright or leaving that nascent human life to die. Dr. Amato with OHSU says this kind of criticism is nothing new. Well, we definitely acknowledge there are a lot of ethical issues raised by this type of research, and that is also true of in vitro fertilization, and people raised the same concerns when in vitro fertilization first came to be over 40 years ago. To me, the biggest ethical issue is, is this safe, and is it going to be safe to produce a baby? But beyond that, a lot of the ethical issues that people uh, talk about are, are very similar to the ethical issues around IVF. So these days IVF is largely accepted by and there's you know over 14 million babies born through IVF and I think that's going to be true of a lot of these technologies as well. Research on fertility has been controversial for a long time. OHSU says they did not get any federal funding for this research because federal law prohibits using federal dollars for research that involves the destruction of human embryos. That's been in place since the 90s. So all of this research was privately funded. This experimentation was not done 
even with the idea that there would be a baby on the other end. They knew that they knew that these embryos, no matter how far successful they were in growing them, were going to be destroyed or left to die. And I think that should be problematic for all of us. It should cause all of us pause as to whether or not we should allow scientists to do that kind of experimentation. Again, this research is at least a decade away from producing a fetus that would make it to term. But to further complicate things, in order to start clinical trials, the researchers would have to leave the country because federal law prohibits the FDA from considering any clinical trial that involves genetic modification of a human embryo. Okay, so talk to us. What do you think? Is this kind of research exciting to you? Potentially allowing children to be genetically related to parents who might not have had that option before? Or does it cross too many ethical lines in your mind? Email us, the story at kgw.com, or call and leave us a voicemail, 503-226-5090.